Welcome, everyone, to the School of Greatness podcast. Very excited about today's guest. Her name is Justine Ezeric, and she's got a new book out called I, Justine, and it's a memoir about your life. It's very cool, and I want everyone to make sure they go pick up a copy. But I'm very excited you're here. Thank you. High yeah, five. Yeah, high five. This is here. exciting. Very excited. Uh, we were talking before about how you know I met you, I think, four or five years ago through a Daily Booth meetup hang thing yeah. in New York City. And for four years, I've been trying to reach out to you to make this happen for an <laughs> interview. We are. And we finally made it happen. This is crazy. And for those that don't know, I, we, I think we became friends on Facebook shortly after that, which mm-hmm. you probably don't remember. I do remember that because okay. I went through maybe like three years ago and deleted everyone that I didn't really? actually know or have ever met. Okay. So that's must have been yeah, intense. So you made you made the cut. That must have been like a, a five day process. Oh my God. And it was like a four month process. <laughs> and then now... You know, anytime a birthday shows up and I'm like, mm, I don't know you, That's it. you're gone. It's the birthday cue. Yeah, it's when great. When I delete a lot of people as well. It's every amazing. Day. I'm like, yeah. happy birthday, you're gone. I like that. Um, and a lot of my friends have interviewed you and uh, I'm always like, I gotta get Justine on someday to really talk about her story. So I'm excited that we made it happen. I, I Facebook messaged you, I believe like once or twice a year over the last three years to say, hey, let's get you on an interview. And then finally when her book came out, she responded, so it was like perfect. Yay. Okay, cool. Well, I feel like I travel so much too and it's so like I'm anytime good. I'm home, I don't ever want to do anything. That's good. I mean, you're doing it all yourself. <laughs> you're creating so much content yourself mm-hmm. that it's like, why do it for someone else? Yeah. So I get it. Well, no, and it's fun too because, you know, I think doing this kind of stuff is very lonely. And I think a lot mm. of people don't understand that. I mean, for YouTubers, we sit in our room by ourselves and talk to no one. To yourself. Yeah. And essentially, like, I'll have conversations throughout the day with myself. And I'm like, oh, I got to go turn the camera on so that somebody else can hear that conversation. Oh, so really? it's, very, it's really weird. Yeah. Now, when you were a kid growing up, did you, uh, you know, talk to yourself or have like, Im- Oh imagination. My goodness. Yeah, I had friends so many and... friends. I had friends, I had animals. I had none of those. Well, I don't care. I had some friends and animals, but um, I don't know. I, I definitely did have some imaginary friends. I and think everybody did. Did you pray? Right? I didn't really, I mean, I was just lonely mm-hmm. and I just played with like a basketball and um, that was my friend. But I didn't like talk to anyone. But it sounds like, did you like did. talk and like with Barbies and play and. <laughs> my, my like poor Barbies, but yeah, I was going to say they didn't really last very long in my house, <laughs> sure. but yeah, definitely a lot of video games. Okay. So. And, uh, I think I read somewhere in like fifth or sixth grade, you built your first website. Is I it? did. Okay. Yeah. Now, why did, were you inspired to create a website then and how, and you're in your late twenties? Oh yeah, sure. Right. Mm, early 30. <laughs> okay. Mm, okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so and that was a long time ago. So back then, you know, there was nothing that like, WordPress now, or and there's there other things nothing. too. You just push a button, you have a blog, you have a website. So then I was coding HTML myself, what? and I didn't even know what the heck I was doing. And you were but, using a modem, probably a dial-up. Oh modem. yeah, and this was so early. It was like ninety something. I'm not sure, but wow. um, yeah. So one of my friends, who's actually a good friend now, he kicked me in sixth grade. He says this doesn't happen, but it impacted my entire life. And so he kicked me, and I had no way to sort of get back at him. So I made a website. A, about him. About which is, him. Yeah, and I wasn't bullying because I didn't post it anywhere. It was more just, wow. man, I'm so upset. Like, Steve, he kicked me. This, this is terrible. So I kind of just took that anger and sort of found a passion of something that I loved. Because I was like, wow, I had a really good time photoshopping Steve's face Shut over top up. of like the devil. No and, way. Yeah, and I did all this stuff and then I made the website. I was like, that was fun. Delete. And then I went and continued to make websites from there. So, wow. sixth now, grade. Sixth grade. 11, now, did you, 12. When was the first website? Did you ever show him that website? No, I told him about it many okay. years later. So yeah. you just showed your imaginary friends. Well, you no, know, I actually did show a real friend. Her name was Natalie, so she was there and she she did witness it. Did she was she amazed at your creation or? I don't think so. No, okay. no we were too young. <laughs> so when was the first time you created the website that you actually published and you thought I'm going to create something for a bigger reason than you know making fun of a friend who kicked me? Yeah, I did a website. It was called Daily Random Photo. Mm. And we called it like DRP, like, oh, what's Justine's DRP going to be today? Uh-huh. And I would post a random photo every single day, all through like high school, all through college. Wow. And I coded that again, all HTML, like, you know, the back buttons, the forward, each page had to link together. It was awful, but it was a lot of fun. And it was, this was high school. It, yeah. So this is probably like all through high school. I did that. You're like a child genius. I don't know about child genius. Just, you know, <laughs> I, I, I knew enough to be dangerous. Sure. For guys like me that took me, you know, until college to learn how to, to type, you know, um, you're like a genius to me, right? Yeah. Well, I'll take <laughs> oh, that. You're like, you have so much pity on me. <laughs> you needed to oh. play Mario Teaches Typing. That's how I learned to type. Oh, really? Yeah, it's great. Great game. Oh, my gosh. I think there's like a Missing Flash out. game available now. Okay. <laughs> so it sounds like you created the early daily booth. 
before Daily Booth was you there. You are right. I did. But the best part, man, I love Daily Booth. The problem with it, so it was just, it was way too early. And Instagram came out with an app around the same time. If Daily Booth would have had an app, I think it they wasn't would an app. Been, it was a website, right? It was a website. And you had to like screenshot it mm-hmm. from your your whatever your camera on your yes. computer. It Which was, was great. Cool. It was great. It was so much fun. But the app would have crushed it. I, know. I guess that's kind of what like Shots is now, right? It's like the. The selfie. Yeah, do there's so right. too many things. <laughs> we got, I got to draw the line somewhere. Right, right. <laughs> but do you? Because I know you get pretty much started in almost every social networking site I do. early on. Oh, like I still have the, the app. Week. I follow Justin Bieber on it. On shots? He was the one that told me to download right. it. I was like, I'll, all right. <laughs> he told you personally? No. <laughs> He told me on Twitter. Okay. I saw the tweet. You saw the tweet to 60 million people. <laughs> well, you that, were one of the people to but saw But that's it. the thing with the internet is people mm. think it's personal. Mm. So, I mean, oh yeah, Justin Bieber told me to download it. Right. No, that's just like a lot of the people that, that watch my videos. It's like, well, Justine told me. Sure. Mm. Justine told me to buy my, her book and yeah. so I did. I was like, thank you. Thank you. High five. Fave <laughs> on Twitter. Hype. Give you a retweet. What else? <laughs> I like it. I like it. So whatever happened to that site then? No, I don't, nothing. I mean, I think I just deleted it. Just deleted it? Okay. And what's the thing that's taken off the most for you since you started in the beginning till now? Is there a site or a social network for you that's taken off the most and sustained that time? Um, I mean, I think YouTube has been very interesting because it's one of those things where they change the algorithm so much Mm -hmm. as far as like creating content. So you're never really sure what's going to work, Right. which I kind of think has been been the only thing that's really kind of kept me interested in it really because I'm never sure what's gonna work and half the time I just post videos that I know will be for my key audience and sometimes those end up I hate saying the word viral Going viral but it will not. go outside of my initial audience and then uh-huh. I'm like crap that was not meant for anyone else to see it except you know my like core the, audience the 20 to 75,000 that I, I'm okay with seeing it you didn't want like the executives or the professionals or the guys you're interested in seeing some weird no teenager weird video you do or something an example was i was at doing a project with steak and shake uh-huh. and i made like a simple little I video love steak and i shake. do too. i love that is oh there one God. here in la there is there's one in santa what? monica yeah oh there is that's yes. right i used the to live in Street. st louis missouri and there's so many there that i would go to yeah that's right there is one gosh they're so good oh, it's delicious sorry go ahead no but anyway so I made just a video about telling like my audience on a second channel that I wanted people to come to meet me at Steak and Shake the next day. And wow. this wasn't meant to be seen by Steak and Shake. And it when wasn't was this? Uh, it was like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, oh, it was really? yeah. Did you shut down the promenade? No, this was in <laughs> uh, I went to Indiana for the Indy five hundred. Okay. So they were doing like a meetup there. And then Steak and Shake ended up tweeting this video. I was like, no, 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 no. No one else oh was supposed gosh. to see it. Cause it was like me and my sister, like we were in the hotel, I was in bed. I was just like, all right, chatting with my friends the internet friends and I'm like shoot they tweeted that out like that no one's supposed to see that that was not a good video it was not my best work so I think that's what's kind of people don't realize especially kids today that things that they post anybody can see it Mm -hmm. even if it's deleted it's somewhere and what is, and what happened from that result from them posting oh, nothing, that? Nothing you, happened. Were there a lot of people there or what? Well, there was a bunch of people there, yeah, but it was just more embarrassing. I was like, oh god, I should have brushed my hair or <laughs> something. Like, <laughs> put on a decent shirt, and took this cat shirt off or something. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I like it. So you're still involved with YouTube because they keep changing. Mm-hmm. If if you knew that you could, um, you know, capitalize on every video did and every video did would go viral, would you keep using it or would no, you? No, definitely. I mean, yeah, I, I just think it's it sort of is a different perspective. Like I think a lot of people don't realize that sometimes we don't really want a lot of people to see a specific video is what I'm trying to get at. Why would we post a video then if we don't want people to see it? I want specific people to see it more or less. Like Mm. the people that I know that care about me and I'm, I have a message for them, you know, cause a lot of people are like, this video was stupid. Why did I watch this? I'm like, well, I don't know why you watched it. Like you found it, (laughs) but this, this message wasn't for you. And I think that's one of the reasons why I really wanted to write a book was sort of, tell the story from beginning to currently where I am because it's kind of like bands you know they, they they're they like oh this band just came out of nowhere they have a number one yeah hit. after 10 years of yeah. practicing together and, and touring hustling and, 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 yeah so yeah. I think I just wanted people to realize that okay this didn't come out of nowhere yes I have some stupid crazy videos but there's some content that I like more than others and I how guess. many channels do you have I'm assuming you create these different channels so that you can do different videos to specific mm-hmm. audiences right yeah so that I mean I now have three so one is like my main channel the third one is like a gaming channel so it's just right. specific gaming content and then the second one's just extra content that's not for everybody sure but then it but People it gets shared it. because you have, uh, you know, fans that watch all three probably. Yeah, they do. And they're sharing it to their friends. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so it's bound to happen. I've seen your gaming stuff and it's, it's you're a huge gamer, right? I love it so much. Like it it really makes me game. happy. <laughs> How often do you play video games? Oh, I mean, as much as I can. And, I, and, and the hard part is traveling. So I'll always have like, um, I do have like a gaming 
travel Portal rig the, yeah, that yeah. I can take with me. Um, it's like a backpack that has like a monitor in it. No and way. you can put like your Xbox in it. Yeah. But usually I, I'll always have like my Nintendo DS. So at uh, least I have something with me. How many hours a day do you play? I don't know. I've been busy lately. It's really sad. I mean, I probably played for like four hours yesterday. Four hours? That's it. What's your, that's <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not even enough time to like, you know, complete part level. of the campaign. <laughs> yeah, no. What um, What's your favorite game right now and favorite uh, system? Oh, I, I'm a huge Xbox fan. I love Xbox and Nintendo, PlayStation. If there's an exclusive game, I'll, I'll play it. Um, but I just downloaded the new Batman Arkham Knight game, Ooh, which is really I've been really seeing the commercials fun. for that. Yes, very excited. But Call of Duty is one of my favorites. And then any Nintendo game. Any original the, Nintendo game? Anything. No, anything by Nintendo. I'm gotcha. like, I will play You'll it. You'll play it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and aren't you like a host for some of these conventions or competitions or whatever yeah. they're called? Or? It's, well, so there is tournaments. tournaments. So they call it esports. Esports. Yes. So there's a huge esports community where these people play video games. I mean, they're professional it's, it's athletes. massive, right? Yeah. The Call of Duty was like at the X Games the past two years. <clears throat> And, uh, the like, X Games? The X Games. Like the physical X Games. Yes. So you're right next to like all the skateboarders. Like Tony Hawk and, and all these guys. Ex- yeah. And, and then, then you've got. X gamer, uh, you, these are Xboxers, right? Yeah. It's so awesome. I think it's so cool. <laughs> like I love it. And a lot of people don't think that that is a sport, but I mean, chess is it, a sport. It's intense. Video it games is. can be intense. And it's a lot of teamwork and strategy. Strategy, and yes. The amount of time these kids put into it, I mean, they don't do anything else. It's their life. It is. It and has some of to them be. are unbelievable, right? Mm-hmm. Have you ever played against some of these top pros? And how do you compare against them? Yeah, I have. I'm not. I'm not like, they make me feel terrible about myself. Like a four year old, huh? It's awful. Yeah. I mean, it's just that really sh- goes to show you that it is a skill and it is a talent. Yes. How much money can be made for these for these big gamers? I mean, anything. There's. It's really kind What's of. What's the top guy make or girl? I would say a couple million a year. Really? Mm-hmm, from yeah. tournament winnings well, or not, from Maybe not from tournament. There's a lot of other things sponsorships. like sponsorships and, and that kind of stuff too. But I mean, that's just a random guess. I mean, I wow. really, I'm not sure. But I know one of the biggest tournaments is like a million dollar tournament what? that um, Xbox had the past couple of years. So that was something that I got to host and it was really fun. And it's just cool to see like these kids that are so passionate about something and they were mm. able to make that a job and a career. And when did you realize that what you were doing online became, started to become like a job and a career for you and you know, a lifestyle for you? Um, I think when I was able to buy a bed and not sleep on the floor <laughs> when oh. I first moved to LA, I was like, well, I'm sleeping on the floor. This is great. And were you in Pittsburgh before then? Or? It was. Okay. Yeah. So when did you move to, how old were you? I was around like 2007, so like 23-ish. Okay. Do Ish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so why did you move out here? Honestly, I had one trip out here and the weather was amazing. Found love, yeah. Yeah, everyone's uh, like, oh, did you want to be an actress? I'm like, no, <laughs> there's no snow here. It's great. <laughs> there are so many coffee shops. Oh, right? I love it. Uh, I'm from Ohio, so I'm a neighbor of yours mm-hmm. and it's miserable and cold in the winter and humid hot in the summer, yeah. so I get it. And when did you here. move here? I moved here about three years ago, but oh, I was living okay. in New York City for almost two years mm-hmm. and loved it. But uh, the winters are just insane. Yeah. No, it's terrible. But the energy there is just, I thrive off of that energy, you know? New York's a little too much for me. You're a little introverted? Very introverted. It's so funny oh that my you're gosh, introverted, yes. but you built this massive following and you do events and you host things, but you really like to just kind of like be I by do. yourself and just do your thing and play video games and speak to imaginary friends exactly. on the internet. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people are like that too. And, and you'd right. be surprised how many, especially people in this industry are. In the YouTube space. Yeah, are very introverted, which is why we started doing a lot of this stuff in the first place is because we didn't know how to connect with other people outside of really? sort of our little circles. Why do you think you didn't know how to connect with people outside of that? I have no idea really, but it's, hmm. I mean, I think I liked a lot of different things where nobody around me or in high school liked. You know, I loved taking things apart. I liked mm-hmm. computer programming. I liked these other things and there was not really an Especially other women that. who yeah. are girls in high school who are into that. They were cheerleading or playing sports or yeah, chasing not guys very, or whatever. Yeah, not very many at all. So I think once I discovered <clears throat> the internet, I was like, I have so many friends now. This is wow. great. You found the They're message everywhere. boards and the social yeah. networks, yeah. All the forums. And then I think at one point, I realized that I had more friends in LA. You know, From online. From online. And then I came out here, here and, and wow. was like, I have friends now. So it's Real cool. friends, like actual that you hung friends. Out with. Yes, I mean, my two best friends I met on MySpace, and no like, way. yeah. Do you still have a MySpace page? I do. Do you ever log in? I log it? in every once in a while. Really, and what do you find? Nothing, absolutely nothing. So why not delete the the old social networks that you're? I can't do that. Why not? Well, because that's like a piece of history. Is it? Yes. <laughs> okay. It is. Are you just hoarding social networking sites? 
Yes, possibly. I've never thought about it that way, but I am sort of a hoarder, so it makes sense. Do you delete yours? I just don't even remember the login, so I don't even know if I could get it if I even wanted to. And would you delete it? I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Why? I I don't know if there's any use to it. I'm not using it anymore, so why hold on to something that has no value to me or use to me or to the world? I do like to log in and sort of, it's, it's memories. Okay. You know? I understand that. And I think that's one of the things about all of the stuff that we're doing and creating mm-hmm. online is yes. having those memories. Like yes. Time Hop. Okay. It's like, you love it? I either love it or hate it. I'm like, do not show me <laughs> any posts about this, this subject ever again <laughs> containing this. What are the things you don't want to see yeah. in the past? Which yeah. things? Um, you relationships know, that aren't relationships, there anymore. Relationships or yeah. even like, you know, things like with family that have passed away or friends that, oh, you know, tough, have passed yeah. away too. It's like, oh God, yeah. Okay. I know every day on this day. A day they remind you. Yeah. yeah. So it, yeah, it, kind of, it, it really does suck. So I think that's, man. Yeah. And even like Facebook, it's like, you know, those, those reminders just pop up. Happy birthday. I'm like, well, they passed away like oh. four years ago and you see it. Or I'm not in a relationship with them or we're, we're yeah. not friends anymore because mm-hmm. of this reason. Wow. Over this journey, um, so you moved out here and you, you realized that it could be a career because you could buy a bed, right? I think so, yeah. <laughs> 2007, right? Yeah. And how many uh, you know YouTube subscribers did you have then? Because you were pretty much mostly on YouTube and then Twitter 2008, you were like one of the first I joined Twitter accounts, in right? 2006. Really? Yeah. I didn't even know Twitter was around in 2006. Exactly. I think I joined is... the end of 2007. Really? I think so. Yeah, I randomly found it because I was looking for like podcast stuff because I, I was what? doing like podcasts back then. 2006 you were looking for podcasts? Oh yeah, no, I mean, I had a podcast in 2006 wow. and now podcasts are it's cool again. Huge. It this died for like five years. I know. Um, so I think Odeo was like a podcast yes. service so then they posted something about Twitter because Ev Williams was a part of that and then I was like, mm-hmm. oh, check out this Twitter thing and then so I joined that and then I made all my friends, my actual real life friends join it who they now are thanking me. They're like, thank you for making me join Twitter in 2006. <laughs> I think I remember it was 2008 or 2009 where you were like, I remember reading or seeing somewhere on Twitter that you were like trying to be the first one to get to a million or I forget what it was. You have to remind me, but you were like trying to it get to something. It might have been 100,000. Maybe it was 100,000 and you then, were like tweeting because yeah. my business partner at the time was like, oh, this girl's trying to get to 100,000 or whatever. Because yeah. like, Ashton was trying, it was the first one to try to get to a million. million yeah. yeah, but you were before him, you were trying to get to 100,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. And I was like, who is this girl? I think that was one of the first times I was exposed yeah. to you. And I was like, what is this crazy girl on my, no, okay. <laughs> I ask myself that every single day. But that was back to uh, MTV did, I think it was their music video awards. Mm-hmm. And I was like their Twitter host. So it was like the first time they've ever had like a Twitter correspondent. So it was kind right. of, for me, it was, it's sort of, there's a lot of these random things where it sort of validated what I was doing was actually doing something. Yeah. Uh, so that was one of the you're times. getting opportunities. Yeah. Paid deals probably yeah. or cool behind the scenes opportunities, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of people always thought I was crazy, which I still sometimes do, but. And your family was like, what are you doing? Just shooting videos? Yeah. They, they like, don't. Why don't you go get a real job, right? I had one and I quit. <laughs> wow. What were you working at before? Uh, I, so I had, yeah. I actually was working for a chiropractor. <laughs> no way. Doing all of their video production. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so you kind of are building your skills mm-hmm. up. That's cool. But I was a really fast editor and they didn't realize how quick I was. And you were so, like, okay, guys, shoot some more videos. Yeah. So I would get what they wanted done that you would take someone normally three days. I would do it in a day. So then mm-hmm. I had two free days to do whatever else I wanted. And you were doing your own thing. Exactly. Building it on YouTube mm-hmm. or online. Wow, MySpace. I think that was before YouTube. So when did you realize that, wow, this is actually a, a full-time income, not just like I'm making a few grand here and there, yeah. but like, wow, this is a business. This is, you know, going to change my life forever financially. When was that? What year was that? And, and um, I think probably <clears throat> 2008, 2009. Really? Yeah, because it, it the beginning, YouTube didn't have a revenue program either. So I think so one of the first websites that had <clears throat> the revenue was Rever.com. Do uh-huh. you remember that? I, I, vaguely. It was, it was really early. They still owe me $25. <laughs> they're no longer with us. So that for me was like, wow, you can make money online. This is cool. Um, and then YouTube came along and had their revenue share program. So I think that changed for mm-hmm. me and for a lot of creators as well. A lot of YouTubers. And when did you, um, how many subscribers do you have over all your channels on YouTube right now? You know? Over three million because I really only count like the the top three. Okay. But top three. Again, this is one of these things where I don't ever look. Really? Why I not? I don't because I don't curious? want to know. No. Why not? It's like as long as because then it takes the fun away for it for me. Really? I want to have fun. I want to create content as long as I know people are watching it and enjoying it and coming out to meetups. Like that for me is enough. Mm. And so many of my friends, I see them so obsessed with numbers. Stats. And I'm like, I can't and... hang out with you because I don't. I don't want to hear how you kind of 
deal with this world. Right. And I mean, I think I'm very different in that sense. So what's your vision then for your growth strategy for, or just for your strategy in general for what you're creating? Is it just to have fun or do you have a vision of like, I want to hit 10 million subscribers or I want to make this much a year or do you not even think about that? I don't really. really? As long no. as you make enough money that comes in, mm -hmm. you're happy. You're yeah. not like focused on a mm -hmm. big dream or big goal with that. No, and the weird thing for me is like setting goals is I always set these goals. I'm like, Ugh, I'm bored. I don't want to do that really? anymore. And I find something else that's even cooler than that. And I've talked to a lot of people who have set these goals that they will do nothing until they achieve that. And they're so pigeonholed in getting to that back. goal that there's other things that you could have been doing that mm. are so much better than that. So, so what, are, what are the things you want to be doing? And what's, um, the, what's the dream for you then? Wow. I don't, that's, I don't know. I mean, I have so many things like every day there's something else I want to do. And it's like, if I don't want to do that the next day, then I change. You don't do it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I know I'm going to be working on a movie, which is really fun. Really? Yeah. And I think another reason I started writing the book too, is because I wanted to pitch sort of a web series idea based around my life, but mm. nobody could really grasp their head around the crazy things that have happened. So I was like, I'm just going to put it in a book and then we'll talk. I feel like it could be a, you could be a reality show on MTV or VH1 or any of these networks. The problem with reality shows is they're not real. Of course. I've done one. Yeah. Really? I, I, I'm not proud of it. But Let's I, talk about it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I did a uh, I did a show. You know Julia Allison? Yes. Yeah. She had a show on, um, what's it called? Is it Bravo? <sighs> yes, Bravo. I Thank do you. remember that. I didn't that watch called, it, but I remember called, it. Um, oh, man, what was it called? It was a relation. It was like a dating advice show by three relationship experts who were all single. And it was called misadvised. Because I don't think you should take relationship advice from people that are single, first of all. Yes, true. I'm just saying. Or from you know, 28 to 33-year-old women who are a little crazy, too. Yeah. But that's what made the show. And uh, she asked great me to Great television. It's great television. And she asked me to come on one night to kind of support her for one of these events she was doing, and they were going to be filming. She was like, you should come on. It'll be great for you, you know, whatever. I was like, okay, but I really don't want to be a part of this, so I'll yeah. just come on as like your friend. Don't act like this is a date. And so I go on there, and right away, the like two other girls from the show were at this event as well. And she, right away, she goes, "Lewis, meet so and so. You guys should go on a date." And I was oh, like, God. in front of the cameras, and the producers are right there, and I'm like, uh, "Nice to meet you, right?" And the producers are whole night telling me, "You got to get her number and ask her out." I was like, "I don't really want to," you yeah. know. <laughs> And I ended up doing four episodes, actually. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it was, like, so tormented. My heart was tormented because I was like, I don't think I should be doing this. But yeah. my media rep at the time was like, yeah, who cares if a million women see you and it's great, mm -hmm. you know, it's great for you. But it was, like, it was stressful. And I don't know if you've been on reality shows. But no. it wasn't real. Exactly. That's the thing. It was like, let's do this take over. And everyone else was like, are you serious? Like, this is not what I'm going to be doing. Yeah, I mean, even filming sort of my own stuff, like something funny will happen. I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, my sister, her name's Jenna. I was like, Jenna, you have to do it again. <laughs> because that was so funny. <laughs> really? So it's a and reality show in itself. It is. But at least like these are things that have actually happened. And a lot of times yeah. we just will film something and just leave the camera rolling because we know something funny will happen. Wow. And I mean, for me, like that's actually real. And I think there's a fine line between what is real and what's not real for a lot of YouTube vlogging yeah. type people. Yeah. And the internet can see through it. I mean, they're so perceptive and they're so used to seeing people that they know and trust. And if you deceive them, you are gone. I mean, that uh, is one of my biggest goals really? is to never upset my core audience. And any brands that I work with, it's something that I love. It's something that I would have probably talked about anyway. And thankfully, I'm actually able to get a sponsorship for it so right, I can right. survive. Right. Yeah, so being authentic and being you so is important. the most important thing. So what do you? how do you make your decisions based on the opportunities that come in, the brand opportunities? Because I'm sure you get a lot of companies that say, you know, can you put this on your YouTube channel or promote this? Mm -hmm. What, how do you know, uh, what's your gauge of saying yes or no, or you know, if it's gonna resonate yeah. for you and your audience? I mean, it's just something if I can you know, integrate it organically, Somehow, like yeah. the steak and shake thing. Like they sent me the Indy 500. I knew nothing about racing, had no interest in it, but I was like, I love steak and shake. <laughs> right. And now I'm a huge Indy car fan. Really? Okay. It was so much fun. So it's like, I mean, I like to agree to these random projects, even if I think it might be something that I might not be into. Sure. Because it's fun sort of taking my audience along that ride of, I don't know what I'm doing. Watch right. me potentially maybe fail. Right. So it's, it's fun. And do you get all these opportunities yourself or do you have an agent now that represents you and, and tells you what to take or brings you deals? I mean, I do. I do have an agent. I have a manager and like a whole squad of people, which is, is amazing. But it's still like the deals will still come to my inbox. Right, right, right. It's like you emailed me. You tweeted me. And I think that's amazing because it's like I can still make those decisions. And again, you know, it's it's our brand. It's us. It's people. And 
you know, I'm not going to have somebody else tell me what I should do. Sure. That's why I quit my job. <laughs> so right, right. That's why I'm here. Right. That's cool. But if you don't have a vision of like how much you want to make, then are there just months where you're like, well, I don't feel like doing anything because I have enough money or, you know, how do you really make that decision of like, well, I definitely want to make more each year. Okay. So that's, that's nice. Well, you nice. didn't say that, so yeah. I wasn't sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, but there are times where I'm like, I don't want to film anything gotcha. and it is that, that authentic sort of, I guess, vibe. Because yeah. if I don't feel like filming, it's going to be very obvious. So like even sure. I was supposed to film some stuff this weekend, I'm like, I have to push this video because I don't feel like it. You're not in the mood. Yeah. You're not ready. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, it is, it's stressful. I mean, a lot of people don't understand that and is emotional. And mm -hmm. I mean, there is that impact where it's like, I'm so exhausted. I physically cannot bring myself to even... Yeah. Turn the camera on. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate you coming here to do this. Yeah, even no, if you're it's great. Exhausted. No, I'm good. I slept all weekend. I'm feeling <laughs> <Good>. wonderful. <laughs> um, now, tell me about this whole movie thing and what you're really trying to create. What's the movie? What do you? We haven't officially announced it yet, but we've talked about okay. it. If it's on IMDb, I'm like, well, clearly it's, it's out, out there. there. <laughs> um, but it, it's it's fun because it's going to be a huge project. And you're it's producing be it, directing it, starring in it. Producing and starring with another one of my friends. So yeah, it's going to be. And really putting up cool. the money for it as well. No. Okay. So I don't have to do that part. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's going to be fun because, you know, a lot of these projects, you know, we work by ourselves. Right. And, you know, to I've clearly like hosting and doing these other things have been fun. But I think it's something that will be challenging for me because I'm not an actress. Mm -hmm. but, but you've acted in, what, Law and Order, Vampire Diaries, Bold and the Beautiful. You've done your own commer you know, commercials yeah. I've seen you in. So you've done some, right? Yeah, no, I have definitely have acted. But I think this is just going to be one of those things where it really like pushes you. Stretches you. Yeah, for sure. So I'm not sure I might you know, go crazy by the end of the month. I might say I never want to act again. But I think it'll <clears> be really fun because it's... <clears throat> I've kind of have enjoyed playing other characters recently because yeah. I've been I Justine for so long. Right. It's like trying to show people that, you know, there's another side of it, which is again, the going back to the, the book, book, like yeah, the, yeah. the title is I comma Justine because there's that separation between I just seen the character and mm -hmm. me as a person. And you have multiple characters on your videos, don't you? Oh yeah, we don't just talk about them because they're <laughs> all crazy. <laughs> What's your favorite ones though? Uh, my favorite one actually recently is Libby. Her name, she's uh, she's a lobster. Um, I have a really great video. Do you wear a lobster outfit? Of course. What? Yeah, I and she goes I to Red Lobster. These. Yeah, you might enjoy it. If you don't, it's totally fine because it's not for everybody. Okay. I do have one video I haven't posted yet where she. Uh, I don't actually usually drink on camera, but Libby had a few drinks, mm. so she might Libby have got, got a little. Lobster. She got a little tipsy. <laughs> she's snapping a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's great and she's british actually she's from new zealand i think let's yeah. hear you oh so <clears throat> well kiwi accent is much different than a british accent well, so I'm, which one i'm not sure what this accent is okay well let's hear it okay <clears throat> please hold it <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really hard for me to do get unless i'm in my lobster get the lobster outfit <laughs> it's in my trunk i'll go get it okay. <laughs> um so it's a little something like oh uh, hello my name's libby and i've got to go get some biscuits <laughs> <laughs> it's usually a little bit higher pitch, but I, you know, well, I don't Can have you a costume sustain one. that for a full video? Oh yeah, and then I can't get out of character <laughs> the rest of the day. Yeah, and your friends are like, "Where is Justine?" It's usually my sister, and she's so embarrassed. Okay, <laughs> but you get to practice on her, so that's good, right? Yeah, she's she hates every second of it. I think I took the I went to I took uh, Libby to well Libby took Jenna, my uh -huh. sister, to a uh, Victoria's Secret. Mm -hmm. It's great in full full Libby. costume. No yes, way. Did you great. try on anything? Over the hour? I tried, but the woman was on. She was like, hour. you can't really do that here. I was wow. like, sorry. You yeah. got to go in the changing room and do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no now, cameras. What's a ca the character that you're least impressed with that you've created or wish you never um, created? There's really none. None. Okay. No, they're all, they're they're all, all just, fun. Yeah, they're fun. Okay, cool. Um, so tell me, when is this movie going to come out or what's, it's are you taking an a acting classes or do you have a coach or are you just kind of like. Um, the director's it. pretty awesome. So, and I feel like the directors are able to pull out performances from people and that's so important. Right, right. So okay. um, I'm not worried. Okay. My, my biggest concern is memorizing. That is hard yeah, for me. It's that's very hard. Do you memorize in any of your videos or is it all off the cuff? No, everything's just, I turn on a camera and start talking. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see. It's really challenging for me. I was just shooting videos before you got here and I was like just trying to remember, you know, a little one minute videos. Yeah. And just memorizing what you're going to say. I had to take like 20 takes one time. And I was like, gosh, why can't I not remember? Right? That's <laughs> it. <laughs> but then it takes time writing it and I just rather. That's true. Ugh, stressful. One take. Exactly. That's what I want to do every time. Um, so when do you start filming though? When does the process begin? Or is it already Middle started? Middle of July. Oh wow, so yeah. it's coming up. Yeah. And this is about so. a month process, mm -hmm. the whole the whole movie. Yeah. And it's hoping to come out in the following year. I know it's October. This year? Yes. That's why I love sort of this industry that we've wow. sort of created because 
it is so immediate, you know, yes. even like a movie and, and just working on something like that to be able to turn it around that quickly is amazing. And what's the distribution strategy for you guys? Is it on Netflix um, or YouTube or is it? You'll see. You're not sharing We're yet. We're not okay. 100% sure yet, but Mo- I, we have it. In yeah. you have. But, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm, exci- I'm very excited. It, it should be really fun. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> now, is there ever too much content to be created? Can you create too much? And I'm thinking of like, you know, maybe it's different for a YouTuber yeah. or YouTube lifestyle ga- uh, person. Gal or girl. Um, but for just a business owner, an entrepreneur, or anyone, is there ever a point where it's like, there's too much content, I can't watch it all? I think so. And okay. that's why sometimes, you know, creating even more content is not necessarily a bad thing because somebody might skip a day. And if they mm. watch your video today and they didn't watch yesterday, they'll be like, oh, they I might go back. She had one yesterday, so let me go back and watch that. I mean, I think it's really just about like focusing on what your audience is. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you might not know what your audience is, but just listen to them. I yeah. mean, I'm very quickly able to tell if somebody likes a video or they don't like a video in the comments. And I think the most painful comments is the ones where people are like, man, you know, I usually really like your videos, but this one wasn't my favorite. I'm like, oh, shoot, burn. Will you ever delete videos? No, I mean, I've definitely set some to private, um, mostly because it was just like announcement sure, videos. Sure, yeah. So it's like, you don't want it up there afterwards. Yeah. It's like, hey, the come. meetup's over. Yeah, yeah, come meet me here. Well, that was like a week ago. So right, no. right. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> how often is your content schedule do you have one i don't have a schedule i've never had a schedule wow. also i think has been able to keep me sane <laughs> right because if you had a structure of every monday yeah. wednesday friday you'd probably be like well i don't want to shoot today or yeah. i don't want to post today and it's hard traveling and doing other things yeah. and also trying to manage sort of the channel as well right. um so it's it's just i post when i can i try to post at least three videos but at one point i was a posting week? yeah i was posting like 30 videos a week what yeah by myself and i was losing my mind oh i was my posting goodness. you know daily gaming videos. I was posting maybe like three or four gaming videos a day and then daily on my other channel and then three to four on my other one. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're insane. Yeah. That's why I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. Well, isn't, isn't the biggest YouTuber of gaming person? I can't. Yeah. Like, PewDiePie. Who, PewDiePie. He's from, uh, he's from Sweden. And he just posts hours of video content mm-hmm. from him playing video games. Yeah. That's it. And he's making millions from it. Yes. Crushing, right? It's crazy. Why do so many people attracted to just watching someone else play video games. I mean, a lot of it I think is, is personality driven too. So a lot of these people are watching these videos where they're just having conversations with, um, you know, the viewers. They might right. not necessarily be talking about the game that they're playing. Uh, and it's also entertainment too for them because yeah. a lot of these kids aren't able to get these games or they want to see somebody play through wow. it to see if this is a game that they want to get. Really? And then they sort of get attached to the person too. So there's so many different reasons why I think. Wow. Yeah. And you know this guy? I do. You met him? Yeah. Yeah. Nice guy? Yeah, he's great. It's great. How often is he posting? Every day? You know, I'm not really sure. I definitely every day. And is yeah. your gaming videos do as well as his? No. Why not? <laughs> is he like a top pro as well? Oh, or is he, he? No, he's not a pro. He's not a pro? No. He's just he's an a, average he's gamer. A, he's a pro at posting. Well, I mean, defining pro is, you know, I think a pro athlete. You know, yes, that's their, yes. that is their full-time job, playing video games, going to tournaments. He's not. No. He doesn't go to tournaments. He doesn't win. Mm-mm. No. But he's making more than probably all of them. Probably. Wow. Yeah. This is fascinating. It is actually really fascinating. What do you think is the biggest thing that's opened up for you since doing your first YouTube video till now? The biggest thing you've learned about yourself? Learned about myself. Hmm. Because it's been a journey. It's I been a number of years. I am not good at staying on task. I am a procrastinator and no matter how much I try not to be, mm. I am. So that's why it's very helpful that I was like, I need to have people surrounding me that are able to sort of compensate for the things that I know I'm not good at. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, even like my sister, like I know if we hang out, we're probably not going to get any projects done. So I need to make sure she's at her house telling me what to do. So you're FaceTiming as opposed to being a person. Yeah, Yeah. because then we'll just play video games. So, you know, (laughs) I think just surrounding yourself with people that are able to sort of, um, you know, lift you up for the things that you're not good at is just super important. So I think that was kind of the stepping stone for me is learning what I wasn't good at and finding people to help fix that. Got you, got you. Um, I'm curious if you, uh, you know, with all the content you put out there, every video out there, if it all got erased, what I'm curious is if you could ask, put up one final video, yeah, that would be the only video people see for the rest of time hmm. from you. And in this video, well, first off, I'll ask you two things. One, okay. what would you post in that video if it was the only video people would ever see and just say it was under five minutes. What would you under think you post? Under five minutes, which that's a, that's a good average YouTube length. Right, yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't ever plan my videos either. Okay. So if all my videos got deleted today, mm-hmm. 
I would probably just turn on the camera and just start talking. Hmm. And I have no, I don't know what I would say though, is the problem. Okay. Well, I'll give you a better question. Okay. If you had one video left. (laughs) Oh no. (laughs) Everything was deleted. All your social network was deleted. The internet was done, but you got to put one video out there that the world could see. And you could never record again. You could never have any of the other messages go out there. (laughs) And you got to share three things that you know to be true about the world. And your experience and what you've learned. What would those three things be? Um, Nothing is as big of a deal as you probably think it is. Um, Nobody actually really cares as much as you think they do. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, just have fun and be nice. Be nice. Yeah. Do you feel like you've been pretty nice? Definitely. Okay. I think I'm sometimes too nice. Too nice. Yeah. Does it hurt you sometimes? I think so. I'm curious about, we don't have to get too personal here, but I'm assuming you've had a number of uh, relationships since you started. Let's say since your first YouTube video, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, how many relationships have you been in? Like the total of my entire life. I mean, since you since you started like posting videos till till now, have you been like a couple of uh, relationships? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, And I think the interesting thing there is the one guy that I dated. No one even knew he existed for years. You know, didn't didn't, want you didn't post about it. No, didn't want to have any sort of part in sort of the YouTube world. He didn't want to. No. Did you want to include him? I didn't really you didn't care the way. Care. No. Okay. And I mean I think sometimes you want to keep something <clears throat> like personal. Of course, yeah. Um and then I have had dated people who also posted YouTube videos and mm-hmm. I was like, holy crap, this is awful. Really? It's terrible. Why? Yeah. Well just because you were both doing the same sort of thing and I don't really like living sort of in this YouTube world. I feel like I'm a separate type of YouTube really? person. I love doing it. I don't want to talk about it all, all day. All day long. This is not. You don't obsess about it. Yeah. And like these people are obsessed. So every day they talk about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I don't, I really don't want this conversation. And then. Um, like, I just want to play video games. <laughs> yeah. I just want to like live, have fun because you're making me hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I guess the last one, um, that was kind of difficult too because also sort of a personality and. But not a YouTuber? No. But. Uh, Viner? No, I think they're even worse. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's all just about like personality too yeah, and yeah. how you um, perceive that. Sure. And, you know, everything that you see online isn't always actually true. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot Especially of these, on Instagram. No, it's not. And a lot of these kids were just like so heartbroken. They're like, oh, we believed in true love oh, and man. this and that. I'm like, but you guys, you know, you, you only saw what we posted and, and this and that. And, and it, it's so kind of heartbreaking to yeah. see sort of like these public relationships not work out because a lot of times you know the behind the scenes you know the real stories yeah. and you see these kids just like just not well yeah. like the things that they're posting about said relationships and divorces that I've seen like some of my friends go through and the response online mm-hmm. and it's like you just can't say anything yeah yeah so. it's tough. now during these relationships I'm curious did you feel like you were more inspired to create great content in when things were going well? Um, or did you feel held back in any way when you're in any of these relationships during them? And also when you were going through, you know, any of these relationships, did you feel like they, it affected your type of content? You know, it affected the way you connected with people online. Did you feel any, any guarded or off in any way? Um, yeah, I think so what's your thoughts on that? I mean, if you're not with somebody who inspires you to be a better person, I mean, that I think is just so important. Yeah. And if it's not a relationship where, I mean, you're trying to build each other up mm-hmm. and I think that's just a really difficult thing. But yeah, it is really hard because, you know, I didn't share a lot of things that was actually going on in my life. And for kids, they're like, well, you haven't posted in a week. What's wrong? Why are you sad? Or I would try to mm-hmm. allude to things and right. because I, I never wanted to like post a video, be like, all right, this is official. It's, it's over. Because a lot of people do that and they just do it for views. And I'm like, really? yeah. And, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. This is something that's personal to me. There's reasons that you guys won't understand. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel like I have to tell you why. And I don't know. And it's just that paranoia of like, yeah. what are people going to think? If I don't put sure. it out there, maybe he'll put it out there. And so just kind of didn't really say yeah. anything. Let people figure it out. Yeah. Do you feel like um, you're ever hesitant to connect with someone in a relationship or potentially move forward because of the fear of your personality or the audience you have and what people are going to think or say, does it ever affect your decision of, or make you hesitant moving forward uh, or even hesitant in breaking up because of what it could cause? And, you know, and for sure. Really? All of the above. Really? And because I've seen, <laughs> I've, not like you. Yeah. no, well, 
even like my good friends who I'm like, I don't know if I want to put you in this video because I don't want you to have to read the comments and right. the things that these people say, it's, it's awful. Mm. I mean, and if they see that, then they're like, well, I don't want to hang out with you if you're filming and making videos. Yeah. So half the time I just don't. Just do it so, alone, yeah. Yeah, because I don't want to put other people in that situation where they have to read something about themselves that is, is negative or terrible or mm -hmm. awful. And, and then they try to find out where they live and then they start right. attacking oh, these people. Gosh. And it's like, we hate you. You shouldn't be with Justine. You shouldn't talk to her. And, and it's like, you guys are crazy. crazy. Like you can't, you can't do this. Like these are actual like people. cyber bully stalking or something, yeah. right? And I mean, a lot of times they mean well, but a lot of times they don't. Yeah. So how do you manage your, your own inner emotions when you're going through these, these breakups or just making decisions? Because again, you have this platform, you don't want to hurt someone, you mm -hmm. don't want to hurt yourself. What's your compass? Like how do you manage those emotions? Yeah, I mean, the good thing is I'll usually have a couple videos that I have that are just sort of in the can that it's like, I can post this, I if shot this like, like crap, yeah, yeah, I'm like, I've got this in, in the back burner that I can post. Um, and I think it's just like taking time to yourself and sort of just, you know, being around friends, being around people who are supportive. And I, and I love my family, so I love being able to just go home and just sort of just chill, relax, or just not talk to anybody for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Just hang out, gotcha. stay off the internet. Yeah, smart. But it's, but it's hard, because that's your job, and that's the main thing. And it's like, if I'm not able to be true or be honest, or just you know have a conversation with my audience, yeah. I mean, it's hard, you know? It's like, yeah. I don't know. It's just such a huge conflict, because it's like, I wanna tell you guys everything, but it's, there's things I can't tell you, and, mm -hmm. and I can't tell you why. Yeah. And have you ever taken a digital detox for like a week or a month? And do you no, think I, you could do that? I, I would get really bored, honestly. Just playing video games all day and not being able to share. Well, that's about still it. digital, you right. know. Well, oh, you mean say, total let's digital. Just, let's just say social media, just anything online. You could still play video games, but you couldn't communicate with social networks. Yeah, I don't think that's possible because you never right. know what's going to happen, and I won't know what's going on in the world. Like that's that is that is my outside <laughs> connection to people. You know, wow. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I see what my sister's doing. I see, you know, I, I get every piece of information and maybe I might not post, but I'm still <laughs> consuming that content and, you know, figuring out what my friends are doing. So what do you think would happen if you had to go to a silent retreat for 30 days? What do you think you'd learn about yourself? Well, um, <laughs> With no phone, no internet and couldn't communicate verbally. And, hmm. And you just had to, you know, you had to meditate, you got to play games or something. Have you done that before? No, but I have friends who've done like a 10 day silent retreat. And they say they learn so much about themselves and they let go of a lot of things they've been holding on to. And, you know, hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. Would it drive me crazy? Would it drive you crazy? I, I don't know. I think it depends on the part where I'm at in my life. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm trying to gain from it. Well, and the hard part is I can't really leave. Like, it, I mean, there's emergencies that sort of happen every mm. single day where I'm like, if I didn't see this text and didn't get to do, I don't know, like my, my account got hacked. Okay, right. I need to be That's on crazy. guard because these things happen. Yeah. And so you have to be just available. Right. That's why I love like the Apple Watch actually because I can be like, oh, everything. not important. Nice. Yeah, I like it's it. It's clean. Good I remember book. you actually doing videos about the unveiling. and like, Yeah, it's great. It's crazy. So I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but <laughs> I feel like it has actually sort of helped me disconnect a little really? bit more. Because you can just kind of glance yeah. for a second and be like, oh, I don't need to mm -hmm. check my phone constantly. Yeah. Really? So you recommend people getting it who are obsessed with their phones? Maybe. I mean, I've been saying it's 100% awesome, but also 100% unnecessary because you, really, you, you don't need, need it. it. <laughs> no, you don't. But I, I think it has actually sort of helped me a little bit sort of just kind of be like, okay, I don't need to it's be checking good. my I'm phone okay. obsessively. Yeah, I'm not, I don't need to, I'm not missing out on something. No it's right, yeah. Well, the good thing too is I don't actually talk on the phone. So I know if I'm getting a phone call, it's an emergency. You only text. Or yeah. Or <laughs> like when people call <laughs> me, I'm like, you're like, what's going on? No, I answer the phone. I'm like, what's I'm wrong? I'm going to call you. I'm like, are you okay? Do you, do you, <laughs> you need say, Justine, you, I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to say hi and wanted to connect. Like one of my friends called me the day, or it was actually for my birthday. I was like, are you okay? Is everything all right? It's like, I just called to wish you a happy birthday. I was like, okay, oh sorry. Gosh. I haven't talked to you in three years. Is everything okay? <laughs> I've only seen your YouTube videos. Yeah. yeah. Do you need a ride to the ER? I don't know. <laughs> um, what would your audience be most surprised to learn about you? Something you've never shared. God, I asked get asked this question all the time you and do? I don't really have an answer oh, for well, you it. Don't have to answer yeah, I don't really know. Hmm. Is like, there anything you've, you haven't shared that you want people to know about you? Oh God, I've shared so much, honestly. Yeah. And I can't even think of anything. Um, <laughs> I'm really tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got I, off of this successful book launch. That's why. Well, yeah. And I think a lot of people are like, how do you stay? How do you always have energy? I'm like, I don't, I'm you exhausted. Just turn it on for that moment yeah. if you need to. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what's your favorite social network right now? 
I'm real into Instagram. Gosh, me too. Yeah. Why? Why is it so addictive? I think and because powerful? it's powerful. It's 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 photos. You don't have to read. It's kind of you're just scrolling. And if you want to read, you can. Yeah. And I think for me too, I only follow sort of like my friends and yeah. people that I know on Instagram. Right. So it is very personal. Whereas even Facebook, some people slip through that I don't really. Well, there's you know. a lot of sponsored ads and things like mm-hmm. that. I'm guilty of that. I, I promote a lot of sponsored things there. So I try to show up in everyone's feed if I can yeah. for my business. <laughs> yeah. So uh, in Instagram, it's supposed to be opening up for ads for everyone, mm-hmm. which might be a game changer for me too. But I've kind of enjoyed the different ads because you can swipe nice. through. Like and I can get beautiful. a couple of photos. Yeah, it's great. And they have like little videos sometimes and photos. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what do you think is going to be the most powerful social network for businesses and entrepreneurs to grow their brand, to grow their audience in the next... 12 months or is it Mm. not even created yet i've been interested it might not be created but it's been interesting to see how brands are trying to use periscope i just started like a week yeah no it's it's, crazy it's cool and i i've always loved sort of that live aspect Mm -hmm. of things but i don't know how brands are necessarily going to use it but i did know like nintendo was using it at e3 so it was kind of fun to sort of see the behind the scenes Mm -hmm. stuff that nintendo was releasing you know as they were releasing it and it has to be you know interesting content that we're going to want to tune in for right that second yeah and then like, a lot of people are busy, so you're not able to watch it. And then you can't actually watch it live on the web afterwards. Mm-hmm. And it's only there for 24 hours. Right. It's kind of so, like yeah. Snapchat-y a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do, do like Snapchat. I'm starting to really dig mm-hmm. it too. It's, it's cool. It's funny because people, there's a whole culture where people are really obsessed with Snapchat. And they'll comment on my other social networks about what they loved about my Snapchat. Yeah. Oh, it's well, cool. that's nice. You're like, I'm so yeah, glad you cool. enjoyed my Snapchat I kind of wish they could leave a comment on Snapchat too. It's kind of like, yeah. I wish you could, but... Maybe that's the whole purpose of I it. I think it is sort of the appeal of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I do have, so I have two Snapchats, one where I just, two? From, well, just for my like friends and family. How do you focus on all this stuff? I don't. That's, I'm super ADD, which I don't is. I even remember which social network <laughs> sites you have, the logins. I don't, I forget that a lot. There's a lot, but I mean, that's, that's what I do all day. Right. So. It's crazy. Yeah. So you have two Snapchats, one for family and then one mm-hmm. for the world. Yeah. Wow. It's fun. It is fun. It is. But good. you like Instagram the most right now. I think so. Instagram and Twitter, those are my two go to. Still, you like Twitter? Oh, I love Twitter. I do. I, Still. I mean, yeah. You don't well, like it? No, I, I, I just feel like it's not as powerful of a, a driver of exposure anymore. I feel like there's too much going on. You know, mm-hmm. I just check what people are constantly saying to me and replying and sharing my podcast or whatever. Yeah. Then I'll reply to people that way. But I'm not looking at news anymore through there. I'm looking you know, on Facebook or elsewhere mm-hmm. for that. But. No, I mean, I use it just to connect with people, mostly just have conversations. And I think when Twitter first started, it wasn't really made for having conversations. Mm -hmm. And now I think that's the best means of of talking to people. Sure. When do you ever turn off? Do you? When I feel like I have to. You just take the phone away and put the (laughs) Apple Watch on (laughs) non-vibrate. Doesn't it vibrate? It does. It's been making noises, but I can't figure out how to turn it off. It's all good. (laughs) (laughs) Crazy. Um, Well, a couple final questions for you. Um, what are you most excited about in your life right now besides the book? Mm. Um, going home to visit my family. Yeah. yeah. How I often really, do you get home? As much as I can. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's going to be exciting. And hopefully uh, me and my sister are actually going to start a podcast. Called? Yes. We don't know yet. We're not going to know probably till the fifth episode. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to start an actual podcast on iTunes. Mm-hmm. That's going to go out everywhere. Or like but Spotify or we're not uh, sure what's going to sure. happen. But You'll probably blow it up with that. We'll see. We'll see. With your audience, Grace came out with a podcast. She did, yeah. She's crushing it. Oh, she's awesome. I love her. Huge audience. Yeah. She's it's, crushing. That TV show she's got now, she's just mm-hmm. dominating the world. It's good for her. It's so, fun. So you're just going to do a podcast with you and your sister. Mm-hmm. When are you Have random it? people on. So you, you should come over. I'd love to. Yeah. love to. When are you, when, when are you doing it? Um, we were going to start it last <laughs> year around. <laughs> <laughs> so in two years, maybe? No, I think probably very soon. But now I'm working on like setting up sort of like a studio so that like nice. I can just actually come in, do it, record, shoot. That's what I do um, here. Yeah, it's great. It's it's, cool. If you have it set up and it's easy to do, then it's you're so much more likely to do it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you have all the equipment you need, but if you want any support, let me know. Yeah. Let you um, know. And what are you most grateful for in your life recently? I think my friends. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause it's like, you know, a lot of stuff goes on and no one ever actually sees sort of the behind the scenes and all the people that are mm-hmm. there to support you. And, and, you know, even just like with the launch of the book, like, you know, seeing so many random friends that just kind of surprised me and came out yeah. to like all the book tours That's and, cool. and all the random cities. I was like, Oh my gosh. Oh. Like my best friend from high school, like showed up at the one in Pittsburgh and I like looked over, I was like, I just started crying. I was wow. like, oh, it's so good to see you. Um, That's cool. and a really surreal experience I had at BookCon. I love RL Stein. 
Like I used to read all of his books in like middle school and this little girl came up to me and was like crying and, and she just like, was like, I love you so much. And just like, like bawling her eyes out. I'm like, oh honey, it's okay. Like everything's going to be okay. <laughs> so I'm just hugging her and then I look over and I see R.L. Stein. Then I start to cry. Oh my gosh. It was so, it was weird because I, I kind of had that moment of, of having the feeling that this girl was feeling. And it was just like this circle of like. That's very meta like. It was so meta, but then it was like I understood sort of. Wow. how these kids were sort of feeling mm. because I had that same initial feeling where I was like, oh my gosh, Arl Stein, this PR person's like, honey, do you want a photo? I'm like, yeah, oh my I do. Gosh. I'm like crying, <laughs> holding another crying girl. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, you know, I'm just grateful to, to sort of have that feeling mm. to know what these kids are feeling and know yeah. that you're like making an impact in people's lives and, yeah. and, and just getting to see them on like the tour was so awesome and, and just great. hearing their stories and hearing, you know, how I've helped them is That's great. It's awesome. And That's if I've great. helped one person, then I'm happy. That's cool. And what do you feel like is the, the, the most incredible experience you've had? Maybe it's that since this journey of yours, what's the thing that like inspired you the most, the person you got to meet who was most inspiring or the opportunity that you got that you wouldn't have got without mm. this. Ugh. It's just like this unbelievable night of adventures. Yeah. Or, you know, what was that? I mean, I think there's been so many along the way. I probably like every day you get that, right? <laughs> there's a lot of random things. There's there's probably two. One I think was a really surreal experience for me is being in. Um, I was in the Black Ops Two commercial. Mm -hmm. For I mean, I was in a commercial for my favorite video game. Wow. With like Robert Downey Jr. That is surreal. Like I lost my mind. Like this was it was so amazing, and I was like, this is crazy. Like I never thought that would happen. And then probably one of the most fun trips I've ever been on was to Iceland, and just being able to like sort of see Iceland and meet the people. And you know, I met one of my really good friends there who. Um, she ended up, they just had her along for the ride to be like our producer. And uh -huh. I was like, oh my God, now she's like my best friend. And you just never know how you're going to meet people. And um, sort of even like talking like in the book, like all these people that I've met along the way, like you never know when you're going to see them again or, or when, I don't know, how they might impact your life. So that's why it's right. like always be nice to people. Sure, sure. Well, I, I got a couple, one final question, but I want to make sure everyone gets a copy of this Yay. book. I, Justine, check it out. It's pretty cool. It's an easy read. Easy read. There's <laughs> lots of cool photos and stories, and you're going to learn all about your journey, which mm -hmm. I think is really interesting. A lot more that we talked about today is in this book, so make sure to check it out. Justine, I want to take a moment to uh, acknowledge you before my final question and, and really acknowledge you for being yourself. Thank I you. love that you have been yourself throughout this entire process, and that continues to come up for me when we're, when we're talking, when I you know, see your posts online is that you are authentic to being your goofy, silly, outrageous, mm -hmm. fun self. And for me, you take a huge risk every time you post something online. You take the risk of being uh, criticized, of being attacked, of being bullied, of all these different things that people experience online, and you keep doing it with passion and with joy because it fills you up. So I really acknowledge you Thank for you. the journey you've made, how much you've impacted people's lives, whether you know it or not, and uh, for being yourself. It's, well, it's been you. a pleasure to, to see this and to yeah. watch your, your journey. So final question is what's your definition of greatness? Greatness, wow. I, honestly, I think that's probably different for everybody, but I mean, mm -hmm. for me, you know, I know I've been able to touch so many lives yeah. and I'm able to have fun and make a career out of doing something that I love and enjoy and just get to meet so many amazing people. I mean, for me, that's, that's it. Like yeah. everyone's like, well, what do you wanna do next? I'm like, well, I'm happy doing what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Whatever happens next, I mean, we'll see. Yeah, cool. Justine, thanks so much Thank for coming so much. on. I appreciate it. Yeah.